say thank you very, very much, everyone. Uh, what an absolute honor to be coming on stage. So, thank you for coming along to the breakout. Obviously, everyone wants to see the fan, but maybe the room is full and you ended up here, right? So, well, we are. Uh, Oh, you stuck around for Sean and Kelly and Christian and Kelly. It was so awesome. And I did I did get the chance to give them the shout out last night as well. But you would have seen on my poster that I, I've always believed it's worked so hard and the mental report actually I'm confused. And Sean and Kelly have really been Jen and Jono have been out for main mentors, but Sean and Kelly have just helped us right at the start to see things on the kids and really switch that guy on the side steps and on to watch it was anything to thank them personally. Always with me, you so much. So much. So we are going to talk time management back and get stuff straight in. So I'm assuming you're all here because you are struggling with time management, correct? Yeah. So what I just want to do is get an idea of the room. So who is this? Is like your first event. You've been fairly early in the program. This is your first event, and you're thinking, man, my life is already busy. How do I fit this in? Just pop your hand up. Yeah, in the room. Who's been doing this for a little while? You've yeah, been to a few events, but it's still a side hustle. You're still working. And, okay, the majority of the room. Excellent. And who are my full timers? Cool. So I've got some stuff for you guys towards the end. The majority of it's going to be for our everyday guys and our side hustlers. That's okay, but we do have some stuff for the full timers as well. Now, how about couples who's doing this with their business partner, with their life partner? Yeah, and who's riding solo? Either who's riding solo in life or the partner just hasn't come on board just yet. No? We got some stuff. We got some stuff for you as well. So I want to talk time management and overwhelm. I think overwhelm is a big thing for people. So just shouting out, what are the some of the what are some of the areas we struggle with? The overwhelm time management. Don't know where to start. Remember that? Juggling everything. Kids. Follow ups. Perfectionism. I have a slide just for you, buddy. Trust me. Working hard and not smart. Working smart and not hard. Let's do the same one. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So yes, we're talking time management essentially. And the two questions I just want to open with are, are you building a business or just creating an extra job? So Robert Kiyosaki, who I consider the god of the business mindset, money mindset in the world, classifies a business as something that will operate without you. If you create a business, it will work without you. And a good business will actually get better without you. If you can build something that works when you're not there, then you have a business. If you have a job that is reliant or a business that is still reliant when you're showing up, then really we've bought ourselves a job. I'm a strange small business owner, so we love that I've bought myself a job. I'm aware it's a value of the vital ones, but you don't have a business if you can't run without us. So we want to look at are we creating a business or are we creating an extra job? So are we productive with our time or are we just busy? That's really what I want to focus on today. So let's start with the myth busting. Great little photo that we've got there. But myth busting right from the start. And then the first, this first myth buster is that you cannot manage time. I, I don't even like the expression of time management because Kathy Cooper has a funny price today. You have to do what I'm there is nothing we can do to change that 24 hours of the life. What we can do is change how productive and how efficient we are in that time. So the greatest challenge isn't how you manage your time, but what to do with the spare time that you have. Right? So because an efficient and productive business will be a growing business. And you're all here because you want to grow your business, right? So we have to make it more efficient and productive. So Zach touched on this Pareto principle the other day, this 80-20 rule. And I'm sure you've all heard it. 80-20, like 80% of the time I'm running 20% of the time. I spend 80% of my time on Facebook. As friends that I see every now and then, and this is 
now we have to So from a pure numbers game, about 80% of our volume is going to come from the Coaching Kath is supporting. 
We just have to understand that little distinction here. Now, social media branding, yes, that's important. But you don't get paid for a nice sunset quote on your Facebook. Okay? You still have to have the conversation with him. Chuck. I'll talk about leadership development a bit more at the end. Leadership development will accelerate your team for sure. But we have to be very careful about exactly how much time we're spending in that leadership development phase. So I will really just break that one down, especially for my full time as a man. So effective task management, because it's not time management, it's task management, is about prioritizing the time that we have. So what is the most important thing in growing a business? Income producing activities. Right? Andrew Logan, my man. Yeah. Income producing activities. If we want to grow our business, we have to start with the most important thing. The most important thing is the income producing activities. And then once we've done our income producing activities, move to our non income producing activities. If you could start at the top and work your way down, this one's in if you start at the top and work your way down, you will have effective task management. And that will help you grow your business. So we do the important things first, and then we move down to the non-important things. So the non-important from a business growth point of view. And that is how we prioritize our time. Now my full time is here. Once we start going full time, there's extra things. So we know there's like the cool consumer calls, and you might start speaking at events and stuff like that. It's an absolute honor to stand up here and present to stage. And I will give back to this company whatever I can for the rest of my life. And it's an honor to be here. But it doesn't grow my business to stand here. It grows my ego, which is awesome, right? But my business doesn't actually grow by standing on this stage. So I have to understand that when I'm practicing, when I'm writing my speech, when I'm doing my calls in the corporate, that that's not an income producing activity. I have to prioritize everything else first, and then I can write my speech. Now this sounds really easy in theory, doesn't it? This made it sound really, really easy. The problem is, it is easy, but it takes discipline and habit. Show me your habits and I'll show you your income. Because it's really easy to just get up in the morning and just jump in our group and start loving on our friends. It's really easy to find that inspirational quote to put on our Facebook and it's easier to kind of listen to a podcast with a nice cup of tea and then jump on a team call. That's easy. So we tend to do the easy things first. It's hard. It's hard to go out and make a new connection. It's hard to follow up with that skeptical friend that you think you're going to get to know. You know. It's hard to go out and find a new gym and make some new connections. So as human beings, we will do the easy thing first. But who here finds that the overwhelm, like the notifications just do not stop? messages, the little red bell that keeps dinging on my Facebook. You know what? It's because you went into your group first thing in the morning and you started loving on everyone and then the notifications came back. And for every question you answered, three more came up. For every message you responded to, four more messages came in. It's sounding familiar. And we find ourselves in this overwhelm because we've gone out and we've made all these connections with our team and we've done our coaching in the morning and they keep coming back. So who are my nurturers? Who are my like my, my blues? You know, like your nurturing personality. You guys hate me right now. Like your head has just exploded. Uh, you know, your nurturers, it's like Kath. Kath, you are so busy with your event. Why would you why would you pay the problems with the That makes life easier. I will I will Angie and I will come over and blend it and drink it. It's just so busy. My blues, you love that. You love to match. So you want to get up, you want to get up first thing in the morning and just start loving on your food. And it's great, you'll have a great team, you'll love this adventure. It's so important. I would love to share this with you. I would love to share this with you. Now, who's a, apart from Rachel, who's a perfectionist? Is that? Is that? Take your hand up. Who's a procrastinator? 
Perfectionism is a beautiful word for procrastination. Yeah? They're the same thing. I can't speak to that person at this point right now. Imagine if Dave and I are ready. Imagine if Jen Jeffrey said, Oh, you know what? It's only two weeks. I'm just going to say, I'm going to be a young man. Before I start working. Paul and Suzanne said, You know what? Paul is like rental dams. You know, rental dams comes out, then we'll build our business. How many people are sitting there saying, man, they work in the other property? If only we had more freedom. The number of people who said to me, my business will explode when the shakes are released, when the legal shakes are released, and their business has to be. It's procrastination, it's waiting for the right time, it's waiting for the right time, guys. You've got to go out and do things like Sean Perry said earlier, you've got to just paddle out and get done by the time you so, one of the biggest things, and this is one of the biggest lessons that I've learned in very early on, is that again, for my blues, and we talked about this before, right? But you can't go in and answer every single question in the question. The question the question the question the question the first thing you do in the morning is go into the question of the question. Just going to give yourself a And Angie and I learned this. And so, what happened, I'm sure this was our first one, is we went to our first event. So dabbling for about a year. I've been dabbling with the energy because my wife never died off this with girls in Portia. Let's get to an event. We came home from that first event just fired up. So it's a slice smoke, pretty belly smoke. And uh, we came home fired up. It was a four hour drive back to Bundaberg. I was driving and you just like taking my small way because this is my whole way home. And one of the things we said was oh we are gonna have the best Facebook group ever. Like we're gonna set up our own Facebook group. It's not gonna be sound familiar. We're going to have our best, the best Facebook group of the second someone is welcome. We're going to be in there loving on them the second a question is asked. We'll be in there answering it. Everyone is going to get the most support and we're going to have the best Facebook group in our students. Now, familiar. Two things happened. The first thing was that we were overwhelmed. You know, I'd be treating a patient and then a little notification from the path post to the group. It's like, shit, like, What's wrong? Like, this cat's got a headache. Like, she's detoxing. Oh my goodness. Like, like just dump the patient. Like, I better check that. Like, oh, like, the cat's lost two kilos. Cool. And then, you know, five minutes later, you're back treating the patient. Another notification comes in. Beck, who's Beck? Like, I don't even know this person that posted in our group. And we were overwhelmed. We were just, it was like crazy because the notifications and we had to answer them straight away. But here was the bigger problem. The bigger problem was as our business started to grow, we had people coming to us and saying, I want to start getting my products paid for, I want to start becoming a consultant, I want to do what you guys do. But I just struggle to share my story, I'm struggling answering the questions, I'm kind of getting objections and I don't know what to do. I would say, that's easy, you can come to some group, I'm sharing your story in the group, I'm just answering those questions in the group. I'd say, well, I'd love to do all the time I do this. I never got an opportunity to grow. Zach spoke about it yesterday, and he said it now, kind of way up. He said, I can't see my opportunity to grow. So Angie and I actually had to set a alarm in our time. We were allowed to do it once a day, and Angie. That is how we had to do it. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do it all day. So we had to set the alarm that I went in a bunch of time to Angie. And that was the beginning of the process. It's just not quite it. We had to discipline ourselves. Takes this So, time management is busted number two. I need to block off time in my diary. Who likes highlights? Who's here? Who's, who's come here wanting like yellow is Julia? And that's going to go in there. And then pink is affirmations. Right? And then like blue is Facebook love. In the wrong room, sorry guys. I've, I'm not going to give you that. I'm not going to give you that today. Who in the room has kids? Cool. Do kids 
fit the schedule. No. If you don't have kids, like you will. But kids don't fit a schedule. You have all come here with different lives. You've all come here with different goals, different skill sets, different lives, different like relationships, family setups, work, rosters, time, casual, wifo. You have all come with different setups. So I can't show you how we actually schedule out the time. So that's not really good. But I can teach you how to prioritize the time that you have to grow this business in the of your life. And one size fits all proposal is just not going to work. So, what we need to do is we need to learn how to design this in the of our life. Now, there's a thing called Parkinson's Law. So Parkinson's Law is a task you take exactly as long as you do. So, do you remember in grade 11 in chemistry? Teacher said, Here's a six month long assignment, and you look at it and say, So, for five months, three weeks, and five days, you ignored the assignment. Sound familiar? And amazingly, 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 you could do a six month long assignment in two months because you gave yourself that time. You looked at the task and said, That task would take you 15 days to absolutely. I was when I started work, I was very really bad at this. They don't have that, you know, that really good morning routine. So it's like three hours things on that. I wake up and I have my cereal, and I have a shower, get dressed, and I'm out the door, I'm waking up and getting my presentation And then one day, you know, for whatever reason, you wake up like an hour earlier. And you think, wow, I've got an hour and a half to do it. So instead of just having boring cereal, I might have eggs and Checking on Koshi, what's Koshi up to, the sunrise in the morning, and then suddenly it's like 10 minutes before you go to be at work and have a shower yet. Right? Because you gave, you just suddenly, actually, I've got an hour and a half to get ready instead of 20 minutes. So you gave yourself an hour and a half to do a task with 20 minutes. And that is Parkinson's law. If you change your mindset from time to task orientation, Focus on the task at hand, not the time you need to block off. The sooner you message three people, the sooner you can go home. The sooner you do your three follow-ups, the sooner you can go to bed. The sooner you go out, share your story with some people, find two people to involve, the rank the best in the Focus on the task at hand. The sooner you do it, the sooner you can go and enjoy your food. So I would love an audience volunteer, please. Someone who's like first event, this is your first event, early days, and you're willing to come up and just do a little bit of time management. Yes. Good. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Wave your hand out. Hey there, Mike, what's your name? Kelsey. Kelsey, cool. Come on forward, mate. So Kelsey. You're currently an associate? Yeah. So yeah. what's your goal? Um, so my goal is to do more money for the rest of the year. I'm a blue. I have a red volunteer. No, I... So, so what is your? Oh, there's no red for this one. What is your isogenics goal? My isogenic goal is to be able to help people. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. Okay. So, so financially, what what do you need to do for you to be able to help someone? So one of the things that can happen is when you come to an event, sometimes you think that there's so much going on that you can set huge goals and when you walk out the door and actually go to the office. And during the month, there's another group to really start. Fantastic. But let's look at your next goals. So if you're currently a social professional, what's your next goal? What's the first thing you want to 
So what would God consult to me? So it starts with your validation. So we want to create a goal. And we want to create a visual attachment to that goal. Goal for Kelsey is a consultant. So how are we going to evolve to people? Popular friends that are right now. Yeah. Okay. Follow up. Yes. Follow up. Yes. Yep. So looking at it from their company's activity, got a follow up. How are you going to find that second person? Go out of my comfort zone. Go to Started. We started this, this is what our schedule was like. 
Like I said, you don't come out and waste us. This is what we have to do to make it work for us. And we were working as a couple. We were working full time as well. But if we wanted to do this, we had to make some sacrifices. We had to make this work for the top of our lives. So what was our first goal? Our first goal was to get one star. Five hundred dollars a Why? Because the engine was stay at home. So when Jack was born and we were one star, the engine was stay at home. That was the visceral attachment. How are we going to get there? Through income producing activities. So we think by Parkinson's law, it's like, you know what, I've got to get up and I've got to get to work. I've got to get to this I can't leave the home and I get there and I'm late. I'm going to get to the hospital. In between patients, right now, patients are not quite the same. Angie would sit there and I'd rather go to lunch and go to lunch and she'd sit there and go to lunch 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 and Let's get this done. And that's how we lived our life. And our sort of work and our daughter, they were our non So we had to focus on the table and our daughter. Everything else was on the table for us. We had this goal of we wanted to get there. We wanted to see if we might want to be the best of the time we had to have. We had to have that one star goal. So everything else was on the table there for a while. So the gym, the gyms are a great place to be. You know what? Maybe I just come to work five times. Maybe I have to go three times. Maybe I just do like half an hour rather than an hour class. They don't need to stretch up. So, you know, we could create a couple of extra hours. And maybe I don't have to play like I'm playing there. It's that social touch. Maybe the social is great. I'm just busy, man. I'm still connected. But now the bounce on. And everything else could just be fine. Gave up the day plans, we gave up the sleep plans. And it was short term. Okay? And then we got there, we got there, which was awesome. So, what do you do? You set the next goal. We said, you set the next goal. And it is a snowball effect. So, it is not all or nothing. It is not a partner or bus. And you know what a partner was. Right? Like, well, we actually did two snowballs on that. What's the next goal? How are we going to do that? We can't Talk to people, we connect, we get involved, get to events, we start inviting people to events. We still have work, we have two children now. And then it continues. What was the next goal? Now, Angie had been able to stop work, I've been going part time, I've been able to work full time together at this. I wanted to get five stars so I can start my business. We had more time available to come up with work. And that is a great thing about this business. We can come in, we can move away from work, but we don't just want to replace it. So the ratios never change except for the patients. I remember Angie would be in a deep place with one arm and one arm. Because she kept me with other things on this way and other things on this way. So the client would sit up this way and this way. That's how we built it. That's how she built it. So the ratios never change. We talk work life balance and there were probably isogenics who could give you fantastic food. You could give fantastic work life balance and rest. Balance means you can do the things you're successful. If you are balanced, if you are at your goal, enjoy your work life balance. If you are not at your goal yet, you have to take space. You have to give up some kind of sacrifice in order to get the rest. So if you are looking to do 500 dollars a week, it's this. And maybe you're going to instead of that, you're going to try to do it for 10 years as well. You want to get 100 bucks a day at a time. Up social life, work that extra job. Maybe you thought about going to night school, get a promotion to work, get a few qualifications. Again, you can give up time to study and learn new courses. So, anytime we want to bring something new into our life, there has to be a sacrifice. And we can celebrate work life balance and it's just significant. And work life balance is great when you're working. 
So what I want you guys to do is you've got your notepads out. I want you to write these things down, okay? Let's take a photo, but remember, a short pencil is better than a long one. So write these things down. So what is your next goal? What's, what's on your lanyard at the moment? What do you want to be on your lanyard in 90 days, 30 days, 20 days? What's your emotion? What is the next goal? And why? Why do you want that goal? Is it start 1,000? So let's move on. I'm managing the class number three. Let's not talk about my full time because you know what? My management is okay because it's going to get easier. It's going to get easier because the more I earn, the more I can move away from my job, and therefore the more spend time I have. Who are my full timers? Is this right? No. No. Because we have to do better. Ads, you get the your business is part of your work. And your business is part of your time. Okay? Now, ads doesn't want to say, well, I'm going for 60 hours here, 60 hours here. So we have to be better at our time management. A growing team, by default, needs a more people coming to us for leadership. With more people asking questions, more people posting, more people saying, hey, can you help me? This is great for That's great. Business needs more people in the workplace. So we have to be better. We have to continue to get better in time management. So time management will effectively act as a big part of my business. There will be a point where work time management skills will strongly be able to grow your business. With that lid is there, you've been stuck. As you do this more, we have to get better. We have to get better at time management. We have to get better at time management. We have to know how to manage their time. So if you're inefficient with your time, that's really just a picture for you. You need more and more people to see that you can get more and more money out of your time management. And all these people can get through your time management and see that you can get more and So our life is very different. We are in a position where life is very different. So, you know what, we're still building a business. So I still have to show up every six weeks. So I can get my hours every six weeks. Now for me, that means I set the bar and I wake up every day. That is how I make sure that your kids are woken up. That you can come to the business and you can see that you're going to be the next individual. Now we get more time flexibility. We are able to put this together, my wife and I. So for us, it's up to four kids. We're up to four kids that can get the most important things done. So if the kids wake up, we are free. We can take them out one week and then one by one and we can spend time with the kids. Now, we can play with them, we can put some work on in there, we can do things as other kids, we can put them on the one week and put them the kids. We have that flexibility. You might have a different type of setup, you might be a little bit tighter for a month. Okay, you can 
hard to do a two-person sport with one thing, but, <laughs> but that's it. I mean, full-time athletes. These guys are full-time athletes, so they were up training first. They got the most important things done. In the afternoon, they can do the other things. Andrew and I can do the other things. We're not going to be in the house. When the kids go to bed, yeah, then we can jump on the We get up and so here are some useful tools that we find work for us. So a daily to-do list. So that is pencil and paper. So that very first event we went to school is fine. She said a lot of things. But one thing I do remember she said, low-tech high check. Whiteboards, paper, diaries, okay? If it's in your face, if it's ugly, you see it every day. So low-tech high check. Daily to-do list. What are the things I need to do tomorrow morning? I'll write that out and I'll go to bed. First thing in the morning when I wake up, I know exactly what I need to do. I need to put that place in the of the back. A Google Calendar, this is a good app. If you haven't used this app, Google Calendar. But on our computers, on our phones, I know what end you're doing. I know what you're doing, what you're starting. You can put the auto ships in there, you can put the auto ships in there, you can put the auto ships in there, you can put the auto ships in there. The Isolife app. Who is using the Isolife app? There to make it all but make our life easier. Paper diaries, like I said, guys, low tech, high check. Even though know I've got that calendar, I'm still writing things out. Exactly. Angie and I do work as a couple. Let's talk about that for a second. Yeah, this is fun. This is also a So for us, in a better for our marriage, we can set the two things in separate offices. Now we do have much of the public announcement about and I like organized chaos. I just like the see it all, like Russell Crowe in the mind. So it's better for our marriage if we just get yeah, just a separate So we have separate working areas. Now I do want to bring up a serious point. A lot of people say, man, I can have if only my husband come along and my wife come along. The grass isn't always green, and there are challenges to work with. Angie and I are fortunately together, and we are fortunate that our strengths and balance. Angie is very, very good at certain things, and I'm very poor at those things. So we can balance it. And what? There are still questions that we still disagree with. Angie never came with me to work, and I'm sure you can bring your partner to your job. And you survive. But you know what? Maybe you're sitting around waiting for them to go on board and they can get some money. Maybe they're waiting for you to take a service. Um, and I mean that, and I mean that as much as I can. But, and I can tell you guys, I double, I double the shit. And then when Angie finally got on board, she said, we'll do that. She was waiting for me to actually show So maybe if I take this seriously a bit earlier. Now, alarms on our phones and a, and a proper alarm clock. So, alarms on our phone, it's 8 a.m. Have you done this? 
lunch time, have you done this? Remind us every single day at 12 p.m. have you done this? Three or four main things that we need to do each day to remind us on our phone. Because they can have you done this. It's that reminder every few hours that we've got the best in the past. And alarm clocks. Because who's a scroller? Who loves the Facebook scroll? Who wakes up and your alarm at your phone wakes you up and you see the notifications? And cats posted in Arsenic State Z. Better see what's up. And that's like an hour later. Still scrolling. So leave your phone in a different room. Just put an alarm clock in your phone. You get up, you walk out, and you get to work. A couple of other tools we really use. Text replacement guys, it's really, very simple. So yeah, this this will, this will just make life so much simpler. So for example, someone's like, oh, you know, I don't understand the emergency. It's that a text replacement in your phone. A great question. Go to ansa.com. Because then the next day someone's going to say, is this a support for you to do Just like we do. And then it says, hey, great question. Go to ansa.com. And then someone says, how many people do I need to reserve this thing again? Hey, great question. If you go to ansa.icofyi.com, how many times is So we can just have those things set up in our phone. So a lot of our, a lot of our responses and stuff like that, you know, the house got it, well, it's also the house got it, just how it's we also use the messenger appointments. We use the messenger appointments. So Cass, Cass again, Cass enrolled, set her up for three way message with Angie and I. Hey, date nine, Cass, date nine, she won't even serve a reminder in my phone. We set a plan for day nine, which I'll keep trying to keep playing in my slow down results. I'm going to get an alarm here, it's going to be an alarm cut from day nine. Cool. My final myth buster. Everyone is going to do this with me. Full timers. So, we talked about this Pareto principle earlier, the 80 20 rule. And we know, and we celebrate this. We celebrate this because we have such a great customer base. It is a great foundation. It's a great um, indication of how amazing our products are. We know that 80%, 80 plus percent of our customers. Okay, we know then we've got our sharers. Then we know we've got our builders. And we know we've got our leaders. Okay, and it's like 80, 20%. Of them. Is that 20%? 80% of shares, 20% of builders. Of those builders, 80% of the builders, and 20% of our customers. Right? And guys, it takes a while. People, just because someone is here at the moment, doesn't Tablets and builder, it would take me years to fill up my server and fill up my And what we could do, what we could do is we could invite them to the community and have them in the server. If someone has enrolled their system in their mum, next to share and come. You don't need to invite them to the community. You're still learning the system. It will overwhelm them. Overwhelm them. You have to remember that 99% so if we have customers, excellent. That's all I've had. You can start facing them. You should call them in. You set up the best thing for them. I'm here to support them. You can leverage a lot of that support. Our sharers and our builders, excellent. Just be in a slightly different group. The people in business supporting them. Hey, check out this website. Check out ansa.icofyi.com. Let's get into a small group. To share the basics, how to share your story, how to share basics. Okay, let's teach those basics. My leaders, I'm going to give you a one on one group to do everything in a day. I don't need to innovate on individual ownership. The share of my builders, they need to plug them in. Use the tools you have available to you, plug them in, and get from there. Once they have that foundation, once they have the foundation, it's going to be Right, if someone's brought along their hand and they can share, celebrate that and get to the top of the right? the issues that we need to get to the top of the get to those of the service that we must get to. So, guys, 
Con web versus double base. Con web versus So I can get it to a place where we're proper post con web versus three. And it does get it on the same. That's a great use of my time. It's a great credit for my time. And it's set to post with four or five thousand men or whatever. So jump on a certain call. Get hundred click on a certain call. Say what you say, you just share to another thing. You spread yourself out a hundred times. Awesome. Get beautiful leverage in this business. I'm coaching for this event. This event is beautiful leverage. Should we come here and know that this is where we may apply Ken or Zach? We may apply Laura. Beautiful leverage. So there's a double edged sword to the mind of the Double edged sword to this as well. So remember that 99% of people are doing this part of the work. How come some people say, you know what, Andrew, I really respect you, and you're doing it, I'm doing the same thing. I've got five hours of work. You've got five hours of work to do this, and I said, go to the call Sunday, and then we're going to training call Monday, and then I want you to do this podcast Tuesday, and then I want you to do this book Thursday, and I want you to, like, you know, jump on and 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 jump on Okay, she spends five hours of that a week. But 100% of her time, I don't know how to do it. And she got to come in five minutes and come by this and come in 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 and so you know what? You have to remember that I see this is like staff meeting. When I have my prepared practice, every staff meeting is possible to be after that. I have to close down the business meetings. So I have to give a doubt that if I put 1.1 staff meeting, 1,000 dollars a week, which is what we've done. So if I do a Zoom call, I'm going to jump on. Great for my ego. I've just got my time. I've lost it. I've taken a hundred hours out of my time. So always remember that double edged sword. If you're inefficient, you need to get that which is being put in that time to fight. So if I could be so brash to leave you with my two golden rules and say they're efficient, would I be pretty? You're more than you're more than important than the rest of the other. And it's so simple that we overlook. Set the discipline and habit to do the hard things first. Set the discipline and habit to do the uncomfortable things. And you do this, you'll be successful. Successful people have the discipline and habits. Not to be very successful is they set their alarm every morning to do one or two things work. They didn't do all the other things that happen in the last month, the night, the week, the month, the month, the month, the month, Manage your time to relax and put it on your business. It's so important that we have to do that. If we raise that bit on our business, we have to raise our growth and our value on that bit. Like I said, it does take hard work and it does take discipline, but I promise you it is worth it. I promise you it is worth it. I promise you when you can take your kids on holiday to the weekends, you won't see it's behind your time. When you can wake up and go and visit your partner, take your kids to the gym, take them to the park, it is worth it. I really hope I've come to those last very hopeful places in some way. I'm pretty sure that's been a little bit.
Thank you.